It's very important in the Floriani software to know how to work with colors in a design. That means how to load a color um, palette or thread chart, uh, select items and change their colors, add them to a design colors box, just everything that there is to do with working with colors inside of the software. And so in this video, we're going to focus on the different ways to change colors, add colors, um, and just the different things you need to know how to do, and especially doing things like working with like applique, because it is different how you change colors in applique than it is from regular objects. So let's get started. So down here in the bottom right, or bottom left, sorry, you'll see you have a design colors bar. And the design color bar represents the colors that are currently active and being used inside of your design. So when you load a design, it's going to automatically populate the colors in here. And you'll also notice that they're numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And those are actually in the order in which they show up um, in the sequence view. Now, sometimes if you use the same color more than once, it's not going to be represented because it's only going to have the same color or one time. So for instance, what I was saying with that is if I come down here and I select a number of objects and I change the color to, let's say, this first color here, you'll notice that I didn't add another um, a number nine and it's just showing it as color one. So it's a little bit um, confusing a little bit so you can't just think that these are the only color sequences in the design it's just showing you all the colors that are being used so don't let the numbers confuse you and hopefully I didn't cons confuse you by going into that but it will show you all the colors that are currently being used now you do have the ability to add additional colors onto this design colors bar here and to do that you just need to select a color like for instance the silver and you right mouse click and you choose to add to design palette and that's going to throw it up top here let's say i want to add this green up there as well and maybe an orange a, a little bit brighter of an orange and maybe a really bright pink here notice the difference here for instance all of these have numbers and these do not. And the reason these do not have a number associated with them is because they're not actively being used. So if they were actively being used, they would have a number associated with them. So these are just kind of sitting here in lingo right now. Um, when I digitize a design before I ever create the first stitch, I put all the colors that I'm gonna use in the design and I put them up here and that way when I'm ready to apply a color or select a color for a different stitch type I will go in and select it because I don't like to go around searching in the middle of digitizing a design so I like to preload them and you can do that and you can play around with colors really easily this way as well for instance I might want to take that orange and I might want to try to use a maybe that different shade of orange so I might click on it and now it's going to throw it over here now the one thing that you will notice um, if you look carefully is that when I change that color the previous orange went away let me go ahead and undo that so I have an orange here that is poly neon 5 and this orange is a pumpkin 534 as you can see as I hover over it if I select this to change the color of that orange to this color, that previous orange went away and now all that's there is the neon orange five. The reason it went away is because that color isn't being used anymore and so it took it out because it wasn't one that I added myself. Let's say that I want to um, instead have this color of green. If I click it, now it replaces that orange and you can see that that neon orange is still here and the reason it's here is because I added it to this bar. The previous one automatically loaded with it. So that's something else to keep in mind too. When you put a color in here by selecting it and right mouse clicking, it's going to keep it there. Now you can get away, you know, 
get rid of it at the same time. If you no longer want it there, you know you're not going to use it and it's just kind of confusing you, you can right mouse click on it and choose remove. And that will take it away. If I don't want to use this green, I might want to remove it. You cannot remove colors down here because this has to do with your thread chart. So it's going to display all the colors that are available with a particular thread chart. But when you're up here in the designs colors, there's a color that you're not going to use. You can right click and remove it. Now, if I come over here to this one and I right mouse click on it, it doesn't give me that option. And the reason is because it's being used. It's already applied to a color here. So this might be a little confusing, but just... Um, to recap, if it has a number in the design colors bar, that means it's being used in the design. If it doesn't, that means it's just like kind of in limbo, sitting there waiting for you to use it if you want to. If it has a number, you can't right click and remove it because it's actually applied to an object. With these that aren't applied to an object, you can right click and remove them. So. This is just uh, kind of how you work with the design colors here. Now, one of the things I showed you is I changed the color from orange to this pink. So let me come back into this sequence view here and let me select it. You can see that what it did is it combined it with the other color. So now um, it's no longer separated. So if I want to get just this piece, I'm going to have to go in and find all of the elements that belong to it, which are right here, all the way to here. And there's a video on selecting objects. So I won't um, you know, go into that right now, but I'll choose this green color um, or this gray, sorry. So it kind of mixes it up a little bit. So I have these colors here. Um, if I wanna change a color, you can select an object any, any way that you, need to select something, um, you just select it and then you can come down here and you can click on one of the, the colors that you want. You can use this the sequence view to select things, however you want to do it. Let's go ahead and take this gray now and let's apply this pink to it. So now I have this pink color assigned to it. The one thing that I want you to, to get from this too is that a color doesn't have to exist in the design colors panel here in order to apply a color to it. So if I take the same pink here, I can come down here and I can scroll through my thread chart. Maybe I want a purple. I can just scroll through until I find a purple. And all I have to do is click on it. And when I do, watch, it'll replace that pink with this purple. So now it's showing it as purple. If I click off of it, it's now a purple bow. So you don't have to have colors in here in order to apply them. You can apply colors from this panel to an object or from your thread chart. So let's say that you're wanting to find a pretty specific color. Like let's take, um, for instance, let's take this, um, this blue here. And let's say that we want to apply an orange to it. I can scroll through until I find an orange if I want and I could click on it um, or I can come over here to my search thread colors and I can type in orange and hit find and it's going to take me to the oranges. Some people know about this feature, others, others may not have ever seen it before, but I can actually scroll through my color palette by just typing in a name. If I want to get to the blues, I can click on that. And you can see it doesn't always go right to where you want it to go, but you can um, pick a different blue type, like maybe blueberry and hit find. And now it is going to be in the blues. So you can search that way, or you can actually search by the color number. Like if you know you want it to be color 233, you can hit type that in in the search box and hit apply and it's going to take you right to it. Those are different ways to search within the current thread chart and that's what you see here. This is the current thread chart. 
Now, if I want to change my thread chart, that's very easy to do as well. I need to come over here to this little box here and I need to click on it. And now it's going to show me all the thread charts that are available that I have as an option inside of the software. If you create your own, which would be in a different video showing you how to do that, you can actually select that thread chart from here too. Sometimes if I'm working with just artwork or something like that, I might come in and just choose embroidery. And the reason is because it has a lot less colors in it. And I might not want to have to scroll through 300 some colors that are in like a Floriani thread chart. Or maybe I just use a different thread brand. Um, but you can choose different thread charts and it will load it up in here. And just because I have all Floriani thread colors in here doesn't mean I can't change it to something different. Like, um, let's say, let's go to embellish matte thread. So if I wanted to add a, an embellished matte thread color like this one right here, I can right click on it and bring it up here. And if I choose something in my design and then select this color, it's going to change it to that. And you can see that in my sequence view here, it's telling me I have Floriani 451, Floriani K33, 601, and then it says embellished matte 6017. So you can have multiple brands of colors um, uh, applied in a design and that's totally fine. You, you're not limited to just one thread palette. You can use multiple thread palettes and that's why you might want to make your own if you do use multiple brands of thread. You might want to make your own um, thread chart. So one of the other things that I alluded to at the beginning was sometimes you're working with the design that um, behaves a little different. And in this case, I'm kind of talking about like um, applique designs. So you can see I have this little bird here um, that was just a custom shape that I converted into applique. If you look over here in the sequence view, you can see that it is in fact applique. And one of the things that, you know, is important to understand with applique is it's made up of three components, a run stitch um, placement line, a tack down line and a border. So there's three different colors associated with one applique object. So if I go to try to change the color of this applique, watch what happens. If I want to just uh, apply maybe this green color, if I left click on it, like I normally would to change a color, notice that now it says color one, two, three, and then below the screen, you can't see it, it says add to design palette. Let me go ahead and add that to the design palette. And then let me come back in here and click it again. So by clicking on it, because this is applique, it's now gonna ask me, do you want that applied to color number one, two, or three? And what that means is color one, two, or three of this applique. So if I want this green to be the color for the tack down stitch, I need to apply it to number two. So let me go ahead and select that. And I'm gonna come over here and go to two. Notice that now color number two is that green color. So if I go to a slow redraw, that's color one, here's color two, and then three. So let's say for the border, I want a blue color. Well, I just need to select this applique. I need to come over to my blues. Let's just say I want to apply this one right here. I'll left mouse click on it and I'll choose three. And when I do that, it's going to apply the blue to that border. So it's important to understand how the software works with colors and group items. Now, there's a number of different tools that utilize multiple um, objects. So you'll find those mostly in these custom, um, like white work lace, auto cut work and stuff like that, that some of those have the same options in here where you're going to click on a color and it's going to say, what do you want it to be? One, two, or three. And you just have to know that what it's talking about in the sequence view is right here. One, two, 
and three. So whatever one you choose, that's what it will apply it to, as you can see there. So working with colors and selecting thread charts, it's very easy to do. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna click on this thread chart and I'm gonna change this back to the Floriani Poly and it's gonna load that back in. It's very easy to work with colors. It's just um, the first thing you have to do is make sure you select an object that you want to change the color for and then you're either going to change the color from the available colors and the design colors or in your thread chart and however you select it um, is up to you the other thing is if you know you're going to use specific colors make sure that you come down right click and choose add to designs palette and that will load that color and have it available and ready for you when you're ready to use it so those are the different ways to um, change colors work with colors inside of the FTCU software